All right. I would like to thank the organizer for this inviting to this beautiful um, Allen Institute, and thank you everybody for being sitting here for the very first session. So, um, my group studies the patterning and differentiation of stomata. I'm not sure how many of you work on plants, but if you remember high school science, it's actually a small pore around 10 microns surrounded by a paired guard cell. It's a pair of twin cells um, that can swell open or shrink close to adjust the gas exchange and the water control of the plants. It's extremely essential cell type for the plant growth and survival. So the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere can get in to the internal photosynthetic tissue of plants through stomatal pores, which plants can make sugar and grow. In return, the byproduct of photosynthesis, the oxygen, will be spitted out from plants' body. Plants do respiration, but they make well excess um, oxygen, and that becomes the air we breathe. Okay, so without stomata function or development, we are all dead. And so, and also the moisture can remove, uh, evaporates through stomatal pore that can cool the leaf surface temperature just like we sweat, you know, during the summertime. However, when it's too hot and desiccated, the stomata can shut so that the plants um, can survive the drought or wilting at some level. And stomata on the planet Earth collectively can recycle the entire atmosphere of this planet Earth twice a year and also can fix the 10 to the 18th gram of carbons every year. So it's extremely important not just for plant growth, but for our planet Earth and its sustenance as well. So where can you find stomata? Um, Actually, there are um, hundreds and thousands of them on the very surface layer called an epidermis, which is a single two-dimensional layer of plants, protecting plants. And if you look at the structure of the um, stomata, or singular stoma, which means mouth in, in Greek, it's a pore surrounded by this kidney-shaped beans paired guard cell. And this happens with a single symmetric division. Okay. And this single division just happen only once is extremely critical because if it does not divide, you don't end up with pore, right? And if it's divided many times, you end up with malfunctioning or non-functional pores that cannot adjust. So how the division is controlled just precisely once is the question that I'm going to, that's the theme of my talk today. But if you look at the plant epidermal cell types, it's essentially whether you become a stomata or become this cuticulated jigsaw-shaped pavement cell that has a thick wax and protect plants from UV ray, drought, water entry, pathogen, infection, etc. But both cell types actually come from the same initial cell called protoderm. And during the leaf development, this protoderm actually do something called asymmetric division, not the theme of today's talk, but can create a stem cell that reiterate um, asymmetric division or typical stem cell division. But once this sulfate determinant, which we named mute, turns on, this pink one, then this one is destined to become stoma, and its sister cell will become pavement cell. And the beauty of this system is that you can manipulate the cell types genetically and dissect to do single cell you know, RNA-seq or anything as you like. So this is a wild type Arabidopsis epidermis. Stomata are evenly separated for its functionality and just to emphasize that plant cell do not move because of the cell wall, they are glued together. So pattern formation and differentiation happens by orientation of the cell division or polarity or how the cell expands, etc. Okay, so this is a wild type, but we can manipulate by tweaking one gene to have everything made of stomata or stomata only epidermis. Or conversely, you can make epidermis only made of pavement cell. This is of course lethal because plant cannot breathe. Or you can even make the epidermis just made of these stomatal you know, stem cells. And because it's so beautiful, it's kind of nice that we can easily get covers of the journals. <laughs> That's one big advantage. Um, 
<laughs> so how could this uh, cell state transition happen? So 10 years ago, my group and the um, Stanford group actually identified that the transition from the initial cell to become much faster matter made of guard cell is regulated by the sequential activation of basic helix loop helix transcription factors, which we and the other group named speechless, mute, and pharma. This series of um, initiation, proliferation, differentiation to terminal differentiation is very similar to how like m skeletal muscles, for instance, differentiate through the activity of myo-D, myogenin, sort of BHLH proteins. And these um, transcription factor master regulators are expressed at the very transient in respective cell state. And if they are knocked out, then the cell just arrest at that particular step. So if speech is knocked out, then nothing can enter stomatal lineage, so you end up with payment cell in the epidermis. And if the mute is knocked out, this meristemoid, this stem cell, reiterate asymmetric division in the spiral manner, but arrest in the middle. That's why it's mute, because it doesn't make any mouth, and the speech just doesn't make any mouth. And the last step, pharma, is knocked out. This immediate precursor of guard cell called guard mother cell, or GMC, instead of dividing once symmetrically, it divides multiple times symmetrically to make these caterpillar-like tumors, okay? And because these are uh, master regulators, if you ectopically overexpress, you can convert the cell types into respective cell types, just like myoD can do that for skeletal muscle, you know, fibroblast to myoblast sort of transition. So speeches overexpression makes a lot of small stomatal lineage cells, and mute overexpression can make stomata on the epidermis. And the overexpression of pharma is kind of cute, that the cell skips the last division and make this kind of fish scale like singular guard cell-like things on the plant's epidermis. But among these three sister BHLHs, mute is the only one which can drive the gene expression program as a transcription factor to make the perfect stomata. So we were interested in what is the mute target and how could this transcription factor drive the differentiation of this stomata. So to address that question, my former postdoc, Sunki Ham, performed the genome-wide profiling of direct mute target genes by RNA-seq followed by a chip assays. And what she found was interesting. Initially, we thought mute terminate the stem cell division state. So it's repressed cell cycle, but actually majority of the mute direct target turned out to be the cell cycle regulators, such as cycling and the cycling dependent kinases. So initially we were wondering, like, how come is that? But it was very clear because some of the cycling dependent kinases and the cycling A's has been shown to have a mutant phenotype that if you dominant negatively inhibit the cycling dependent kinase B11, or if you have a multiple higher order knockouts of cycling A's, then it's been reported by other groups before that this guard cell end up like a balloon because it cannot do the terminal symmetric division. And we also identified the D-type cycling, cycling D5-1, which has not been reported before, that is a direct mute target, strongly upregulated by mute. And because D-type cycling is the one that drives the cell cycle, G1 cycling, we wanted to make sure, um, test whether this one is really expressed during the symmetric division and how is the dynamics regulated. So to do that, we first did a, a live imaging. This is around uh, 40 hours of time-lapse imaging of a meristemoid that has divided twice asymmetrically. And in this movie sequence, this meristemoid divide asymmetrically once, that's the last stem cell division, and differentiate into a guard cell by single symmetric division. And, and it's a cycling D5 GFP with own, own promoter. So I hope you can see. So here's a movie. So it divides asymmetrically last division, and then cycling D5 accumulates very drastically and disappear when the cell enters the next um, cell cycle state, and then followed by this um, symmetric division. And at the end of the sequence, this guy will become a mature stoma. So timing of cycling D5 accumulation really follows around two hours after mute expression and disappears before the pharma uh, predominantly accumulates. So it's very sensitive, very transient expression um, 
So we wanted to address whether this cycling D5 could drive these symmetric divisions. So to address that hypothesis, we introduced um, cycling D5 into the mute mutant driven by its own promoter because cycling D5 is not expressed if sufficiently if mute is not present. And as I mentioned, in the mute mutant background, this meristemoid, stomata stem cell, reiterate asymmetric division and arrest. But if you introduce cyclin D5 into this mutant background, then you can drive additional divisions. Interestingly, many of them look kind of parallel. This looks like a pharma phenotype, or even like perpendicular to make this kind of squarish like stuff. Of course, none of them will become much of a stomata, but what we can say from this experiment is that cyclin D5 can drive symmetric division-like division of this arrested mute meristemoid when we ectopically introduce. So um, it's been shown by many different um, groups that some of the cycling um, dependent kinases and cyclines at the transition from god mother cell to god cell is inhibited by transcription factor pharma, which I talked before, and the MIB transcription factor called FOLIPS. Now our RNA seq data and other experiments shows mute directly upregulate the same cell cycle regulators that is inhibited by the later steps transcription factor. So our question was then what is the relationship between mute and these guys? And it's really turned out that the mute directly upregulate for lips and the um, pharma transcription factor as well. So these are direct transcriptional loop by direct transcription factor binding to the promoter. So if the four lips and the pharma are knocked out, then for instance, this cycling D5 GFP, which disappears very quickly before the last symmetric division, persists. So you can see that this will just keep persisting and, ex um, and uh, accumulating, driving the multiple symmetric divisions of the godmother cell. The time okay? So um, the, we got very interested in this minimalistic gene regulatory circuit that the gene A mute activate gene B, um, pharma and folips, which inhibit the gene C, the cycling uh, and CDKs, which mute also directly upregulate. So this circuit is very well known for gene expression regulation in, in E. coli and yeast called um, incoherent type 1 feed forward loop or I1FFLs. So the beauty of this circuit is that you can generate the single pulse of the output C, um, C, in this case cell cycle regulators, even if the output A could be stationary. So it's a strong pulse generator just once. So we made the hypothesis that this incoherent feed forward loop really is required for ensuring this symmetric division to just happen once because that's so critical for stomatal function. So to address that, um, we, did, uh, we collaborated with the um, um, modeling, math <laughs> mathematically modeling um, theoretical biologist Takashi Miura and Kei Sugihara to test this uh, hypothesis. So for instance, if, if we precociously express Farman folips and inhibit the expression of these cell cycle genes too early, then we can bump down their expression level so it could inhibit the symmetric division. So we tested this experimentally by introducing Farma or folips under the mute promoter. So when mute turns on to turn on the cell cycle regulators, these guys also turn on to inhibit them. And if you do that, you end up with this very cute uh, kidney bean like um, stomata that it skipped the cell division. And in case of folips, um, its overexpression has no phenotype. This has to be expressed in the right time, right place to show this effect. So conversely, we tested what happens if we precociously express cell cycle regulators. Um, so for that, that can be easily done by introducing those cell cycle regulators driven by the mute promoter. So when mute turns on, um, on to turn on for lipsopharma, it's going to inhibit. Um, it also turns on the cell cycle genes. However, um, the phenotype is kind of boring, just the two paired stomata. So this particular data is under the pharma mutant background in which the folips is the only functional copy left to suppress cell cycle genes. So in this case, of course, the mathematical modeling predicts the high huge peak of um, CDKs and, the, um, and the, um, cyclines. And then what happens? 
So this is the mute knockout phenotype in which the meristemoid are rest after asymmetric division. And this is a well-known pharma phenotype in which extrasymmetric division of guard mother cell happens. But if you precociously introduce these cell cycle genes, then you end up with really funky, crazy things that is dividing symmetrically and, and too much and, and makes this functional mess, non-functional mess. So showing our model. And so the um, beauty of this mathematical modeling is you can actually tweak the parameter really high that you cannot really achieve experimentally. So Kay actually pointed out, even though this type one incoherent feed forward loop is so strong to ensure a single division, um, if you really crank up the mute activity in silico, then you can kind of flip the randomly flip the environment um, and that and downstream regulation that sometimes the cell cycle regulator keep coming back or sometimes the pharma become too strong. So when we said overexpression of mute makes everything stomata, we stopped thinking about it and we haven't really looked at uh, they stomata really normal stomata. So we did our best to induce the expression of mute as high as possible ectopically and see what happens. And the K is right that if we really induce the high amount of mute that the plants become so sad and crazy, um, you could see variety of stomata, either sto stoma made of the singular gut cell, like um, fiber overexpression, or a stomata or a single stoma with like multiple gut cell because of the residual ectopic activity of these uh, cyclins. So just really saying, showing that sustained uh, mute, induced mute could stochastically flip this uh, in type one incoherent feed forward loop and that's the beauty of understanding and working with the uh, mathematical biologist. So today's talk, um, we focused on how could stoma make a, um, a pore surrounded by a paired guard cell that is regulated by this master regulator mute, which turns on the cell cycle genes directly as well as the inhibitor of the cell cycle gene. And this incoherent feed forward loop really is important for ensuring cell division just to happen once to make functional stoma. So having said that, I would like to thank, but before that, I know I'm a little bit over time, but I just wanted to show you this. Uh, it's published earlier this year at the developmental cell. And I just drew this cover myself. This is my daughter uh, disguising as mute to orchestrating the symmetric division so that the stomata is made with just a single symmetric division and the dysregulation could end up with stomata like that. And um, I would like to thank, really, this time, my lab members, especially Sun Ki Han, who drove this project, as well as Shin Yun Ki and Kristin Miller and Undo Kim, who helped finish up this story. Thank you. Thanks, Keiko. We have a time for a few questions. So uh, these are the mic runners on the other side. So before you ask your question, please wait to get the mic so that we can all hear you ask. Do you have any questions? Ah, uh, yeah. Hi, Keiko. It's very nice talk. So I wonder, how did you, well, first technical question, how did you derive expression of cycling five uh, before mute? B which promoter did you use? Um, that's, so we used the mute promoter because mute promoter is actually active in the absence of mute functional mute protein itself. Okay. And second one, a more general question. So yeah? what do you think happened during the evolution that resulted in the creation of stomata? Because I think mosses don't have stomata, right? They appear some, sometimes during the fern evolution. And so you, have not, you now identified several key genes. So uh, you know, did you look at the, at the evolution of genes and how kind of did they correlate with the evolution of stomata? So, um, so this is a question about evolution of stomata and the extent land plants except those who um, basically liverworts, um, all plants, including non-vascular moss, um, had stomata. So stomata is one of the earliest um, uh, developmental innovation of the land plants when plants came from aquatic system to the land. And the genes that make stomata, these transcription factors we identified are conserved down to moss. 
So evolutionarily, um, plants embedded stomata just once, and the genes we identified from model plant Arabidopsis is driving the stomatal differentiation in non-vascular uh, plant as well. Of course, they don't have these paralogs. They have like mixture of species mute pharma combined together. So ancient system is once the gene turns on, the cell just makes the matter. So it skips the complicated um, asymmetric dividing state. So I hope that answers your question. Um, I've done the dissociation of tissue for mammalian cells, and I was wondering how do you dissociate these single cells out of the whole uh, tissue? Do you cut them, or do you do enzymatic disruption? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. So how do you separate single cells, even though we did not talk about um, single cells in this particular uh, today's talk? Um, as you know, plant cells are glued together by cell wall, so it can be very invasive. So people used to do is um, basically um, digesting the cellulose and others by using enzymes to make transiently cell wall-less protoplast. That is kind of, but the protoplast is kind of sad. You know, they, they can't differentiate, or I don't know how way, how long they can maintain cell types on, on without stress signature. So that's one, and then do the fax sorting or whatever. So that's one method. And the other thing um, we could do, perhaps better, is that um, we can isolate nuclei, so we can uh, do the cytoplasmic riboprofiling or something, but then um, the sort as a nuclei, because the nucleus property is very similar between plants and animals. Or alternatively, since we have this kind of drastic combination of mutants that only accumulate one cell types, we actually used those stem cell only uh, seedling to do comparative transcriptome analysis of what makes stomatal stem cell molecular signatures. And, and the beauty of that is those key genes are all like expressed several thousand fold, fold higher. So statistics wise, it's all become zero. So P and, and the F value or whatever Q value, it's all zero. So it was a very easy statistics. So you can do combination of those and nothing is perfect. So we kind of have to drive the um, conclusion based on multiple approaches. All right, let's thank Keiko. All right, thank you.